You know what's wild about illegal immigration? All this focus on drugs and things like that, and all that stuff is very, very valid. I'm not saying that's not valid, but what a lot of people don't talk about is how much American children suffer because of all the illegal alien children who come into this country and, of course, get a free education here. As I sit right here, I'm in the burbs of Houston. As I sit right here, I am 10 minutes away from a school, not in a big city, not even in Houston, one of the burbs out in Texas, a school that has an entire wing dedicated to people who only speak Spanish. Not a, not a wealthy town, an entire wing for the illegals they've piled into this place. It's wild that nobody talks about this. Joining me now, the professor Nicholas Giordano, high education fellow at Campus Reform, higher education fellow, I'm sorry. Professor, you have an op-ed up about this very thing, all the illegals in our education system. Talk about it. Absolutely. There's both short-term and long-term consequences to the crisis we're now facing, a crisis that's actually self-induced. It's of our own making. And when we look at the numbers, so since 2021, over 400,000 unaccompanied minors have crossed into the United States, many more in family units, and they have enrolled in the public education system. So in my area in New York City, they've had 30,000 illegal immigrants enroll in just one year. Now, that many students in one year is certainly going to lower the quality of education students receive, and the system's already failing. It's already not providing an education, but that's only going to get worse. And it costs New York City taxpayers $38,000 per year per student to educate. But the consequences are much deeper than that because nobody's looking at the long-term consequences of people from other countries coming into the United States going through a school system. And while they're going through that school system, they're taught that the country they came to is a racist country built on white supremacy, that America and the founding fathers were evil and the whole intent behind the United States was evil. So when you are indoctrinating foreign students that come here and go through this education system with the idea that they should hate the country that they came to, how are they ever going to develop a respect and a loyalty to the United States? On top of that, we're not teaching American students and legal permanent residents the good things about the United States. They're getting the same anti-American indoctrination that everyone else is receiving. And they don't understand American principles like liberty and freedom. And how can you defend what you don't know? So what you're seeing is the future of a very tribal society where there's a bunch of people that are bitter and resentful because they've been taught that they are either part of the oppressor class or the oppressed class they're a victim or a victimizer. And that's not gonna bode well for us going forward. No, it's, no, it's certainly not gonna bode well for us going forward. Not only that, the eight million we've already brought here are going to have children here, many of them will, and they'll be educated as American citizens in that exact same education system, won't they? They will, and unfortunately, what the left has done, they, they've done away with uh, the assimilation process here in the United States. At Campus Reform, we've been reporting on, on the speech codes that exist. One of the, word, the topics within the speech codes on college campuses is melting pot. So you see the higher education system has done away with this idea as the melting pot. It's a, a racist concept now. It's a microaggression. And that has now watered down and filtered down to the K through 12 system. And understand the idea of getting rid of, rid of the melting pot as a topic of discussion and educating. Well, it, it's really changed the mindset of people that are coming to this country. See, it used to be that when people immigrated to the United States, whether it was legally or illegally, they would have to assimilate to American culture. They would have to adopt American values, American principles. But they've been told now that it's America that must bow to their cultures. It's America that must bow to their traditions and, and their philosophies. And again, so how are we going to coexist as a society if we keep on focusing on the things that are dividing us? I mean, the whole reason that we see so much division in our society today is twofold. It's because no one knows really about the American system and the intent behind it. But the second reason is because our education system has failed to educate students on what actually unifies us through these founding principles. Yeah. Well, how could they get an education from something called 
woke kindergarten, $250,000 in San Francisco for woke kindergarten. And I'll tell you what, Professor, I'm surprised test scores dropped after all that. How could that be? I know it's shocking, right? When, when you're not focusing on teaching teaching students how to read and write, do math, what is their civic obligation in the American system? And instead you're focusing on this idea of white supremacy and how everyone hates uh, minorities and that minorities don't stand a chance. It's not really all that shocking to see the test scores continue to drop throughout the United States, particularly in the Oakland school district that we're talking about. I mean, it really is a failure of the system. And, and the person that owns this company is, is an avid anti-Americanist that, that openly admits that. It's not like she tries to hide it or cover it up. She, she promotes anti-Americanism. This is what's being filtered to the student body. And again, there, there's no standards in our education system anymore. We could pretend as much as we want, but the, the numbers are the numbers and proficiency levels are at 30 year lows. Our university systems continue to fall in the worldwide rankings. You have high, school, uh, high schools in Oregon that have done away with reading, writing, and math as, as proficiency standards to get a high school oh. diploma. I mean, it's embarrassing. In New York State, they redefined what basic proficiency means since we performed twice below the national average, they just redefine the word. It's not like they try to attempt to fix the problem, get students caught up. Instead, they say, well, this represents the new normal, and we don't have faith in the new student body that they could accomplish, that they could achieve, that they could work hard. It's the attacks on merit and standards that we've been witnessing for the last several years, that if you do the right thing in the United States, you're going to be punished, right? We've done away with honors systems in a lot of these public school districts, the honors programs, the gifted programs, all because they say it hurts people of color. And when you look at where the racism lies, the racism lies in the left's own arguments, because what they're saying is, is that people of color are not as capable as their white counterparts, so they got to dumb everything down. The truth is my students in my classroom, it, I have a lot of minorities, about 40% all minorities in my classroom, they are equally as capable as their white counterparts. I don't need to drop standards. I don't need to understand that some people hand in things late because uh, of their culture or anything like that. I have one standard for all my students and, and they're all capable of meeting those standards. Professor, I saw this little video of a lady who's bragging about her eight-year-olds and teaching them about pronoun. Here, here she is. One of the kids referred to me as a girl, and one of my kids was like, Jamie doesn't have a gender. Jamie's not a girl. Oh my God. And like, the kid was just like, what do you mean? And she was just like, Jamie doesn't have a gender. Jamie is not a girl. I like the way that like, the way that has me is so emotional. <laughs> She's eight. <laughs> My 52-year-old parents still call me she after being out for three years. <laughs> and I like just told the, like really like started correcting the kids back in like September. <laughs> like that was like so awesome. That was just like so awesome. Professor, setting aside the fact we have teachers who can't speak without using the word like 18,000 times in a sentence, how many people in your profession are just flat out predators who go into the profession to prey on these kids? Because it's very clearly some of them. Well, it clearly is. And I think that the damage that is being inflicted on the youth is something that's going to be generational. I mean, this is going to last decades. This is going to be end in disaster. The reality that you're, you're teaching children that there's no real concept of gender that exists, you're promoting this, you're proud of this. You have books in, in school libraries that promote pornography. Uh, in some cases, kids giving each other oral sex in the fourth grade, which is about 10 and 11 year olds. It really is shameful oh. what's being done within our profession. And it's shameful that you have the entire education system and the entire medical establishment that wants to promote this on children. Children don't sit there and look at everything as the be all end all when it comes to gender and race, color of one skin, ethnicity or anything like that. Yet that's exactly what they're pushing on these children. And when we look at it, I mean, just look at how they say that, you know, women equality and everything like that. But now everything's being dominated by men, right? Men entering women's sports, men going into women beauty contests are all winning. 
it's a complete disaster all around, and there's no scholarship actually behind it. That's that's the annoying and frustrating part from my end. There's no scholarship. The only scholarship that exists is what we're seeing coming out of Europe, where they're actually pulling out all this trans nonsense because they understand how damaging it's been to the children, particularly those that are prepubescent. Professor, thank you so much. Come back soon. That was friggin' outstanding. Thank <laughs> you.